Hey, it's John at Tinderbox Arts. I was doing a little maintenance on my R1200 RT this morning and <laughs> had kind of a bummer here. When I was taking the coil out, uh, it came out in pieces. So unfortunately, I'm going to need a new coil. But I thought, hey, it might be fun to investigate why this happened or at least take a closer look at the coil itself. Now, this coil is uh, very tight in the opening and you do need, well, it's best to have a special tool that looks like this that slips over the end of the coil and allows you to just carefully wiggle it out, which is what I did. And it's also well known that the rubber boot at the end of the coil uh, can weld itself to the metal or to the plug. Uh, because of that, I always install a little bit of uh, clear silicone grease uh, inside and on the outside of the plug just so that doesn't happen. So I did all that. Nonetheless, it all came apart and I'm not entirely sure why. It's possible this did weld itself anyway, although it didn't feel like it. I used pliers to pull this part out. This was left behind. So as I take a hard look at this, I think what happened was uh, there's this metal sleeve is supposed to fit over here. It did originally. That got left behind. And there's some cracking in the plastic that I can see here. This is the terminal on the end, so that would have gone in like that. Uh, that broke off when it all came apart. And this rubber piece, it's chewed up now, but that's because I used the needle nose pliers to pull it out. Uh, originally, it was all pretty much left behind. I don't see any, I mean, the grease that I used is still in there. There's the grease. So, you know, it's, I don't think it's welded to the plug or to the outside. It doesn't look like anything like that. I think what happened was it just came apart right here at this joint. So, and I didn't use excessive force either. I just wiggled it out and it just popped right out. So I think this sleeve is supposed to be crimped onto here and maybe some of this plastic broke off because I can see missing pieces here. Um, and I think that joint is where that rubber meets and this sleeve is supposed to crimp it all together and I think it just failed. So it might just be heat. So not much I could have done about that. But now that we have it like this, I think I'll take this over to the vise and just cut it open and see what it looks like inside. Okay, so I cut this coil open in the middle of it just to show you what's going on inside. The reason they call it a coil is because there's coils of wire inside. There's two sets of windings. So the external one that you see right here is the primary winding, and that's gonna be larger wire uh, and fewer uh, winds or coils uh, in the same amount of space. The inside right here is the secondary winding or the secondary coil. Uh, and that's gonna be a finer wire with uh, more tightly wound coils. And then in, in the middle of all that is the uh, core. There's not a lot of insulation or space between um, the primary winding and the outside of this. In fact, there's a piece of plastic peeling off. You know, there's just not a lot there. So here's the way these coils produce a spark for the spark plug. It basically uses electromagnetic induction. So what we're going to do is apply 12 volts or the system voltage to the primary winding. So that's the one on the outside here, okay? And when you apply a, vo a voltage to a winding like that, you also create a magnetic field. And this core right here, which I actually I think is iron, um, helps concentrate that, that magnetism. So the primary winding has 12 volts applied to it. When we need the spark for the spark plug to occur, we switch off that voltage to the coil. When you switch the, the voltage off, that collapses the magnetic field. When the magnetic field collapses, that induces a voltage in the primary winding and the secondary winding. The primary winding is going to induce a voltage of, say, I don't know, 200 volts, something like that, and that isn't used for anything. The secondary winding, remember, has much smaller wire and many more coils to it. The collapse of magnetic field in that winding produces something like 20,000 volts or in that range. And that's what we use for the spark for the spark plug. So each time we need spark for the spark plug, power is switched off. That collapses the magnetic field and that induces the voltage in these windings, which is sent to the spark plug. Now what you will notice if uh, these just become so aged and deteriorated uh, that the plastic gets brittle and the rubber gets hard, you can start to notice when 
uh, the spark, instead of going the spark plug, is going to ground. And you'll see like little white marks on the rubber or sometimes uh, on the metal or on the plastic if that's what's exposed. So when you see those marks, they're kind of like scorch marks almost, you know that the spark is going to a ground rather than to the spark plug and you've got problems. But this one looks okay as far as that. Now if you saw my previous video about testing these coils, I suspected there might be a rudimentary circuit in the top of this. Uh, and it was more than just a simple coil. So what I did was I cut this open on the top here and sure enough, you can see some circuit cards in there. Now, I just, <laughs> I wasn't sure where to cut, so I just cut sort of in the middle and I, I got pretty lucky. So there's a circuit board here and some under here. Uh, now, I don't know exactly what this circuit board does or circuit does, and I think I might cut this open one more time here, see if I can find anything else underneath. All right, I took a second slice out and there's really nothing more. It's just where uh, the coils or the windings start. So. The little circuit is not much, it's, it's, you know, maybe, I think there's three little circuit boards in there. So I don't really know exactly what that does. Uh, I mean, I, I imagine it must condition the power to the coil or the windings somehow, but I'm not exactly sure why or what it does. But I do know it prevents some testing of the coil, as you saw in my other video. So, I don't know. Interesting.